This video will begin a series of videos on the brain and this video in particular will be covering the meninges of the brain. We have three meninges protecting our brain and spinal cord. The first and most superficial of these layers is our dura mater. The middle layer is our arachnoid mater and the deepest layer is our pia mater. We're going to begin by taking a look at our dura mater, which means tough mother. We have two layers of dura mater. The outermost layer is called the periosteal layer. And as you can tell by that name, our periosteal layer is going to act as the periosteum for the inside of our cranial bones. The periosteal layer is the most superficial of our meninges. The periosteal layer is tightly connected to a meningeal layer. The meningeal layer is going to become the dura mater of the spinal cord. In most all instances, our meningeal layer is going to bump right up against the periosteal layer. There are a few cases in which the periosteal layer remains against the cranium while the meningeal layer separates from that periosteal layer, creating a space between our periosteal layer and our meningeal layer. We call these our dural sinuses and our meningeal layer will protrude inwards to create structures called dural folds. So let's take a closer look at those two phenomena. The first of these phenomena is where our meningeal layer separates from our periosteal layer, creating a dural sinus. So in this picture up here, we have our periosteal layer bumping up against our bone, and our meningeal layer is down here, leaving a space in between. That space is going to house venous blood. So in this space, we have venous blood. That's why it's colored blue. And this blood is going to drain from the brain. So in this picture, we see blood vessels on the surface of our brain. Not only do we have arteries, but we also have veins that are going to be on the surface of our brain those veins are then going to drain into our dural sinuses and then eventually into our jugular vein which drains blood from our entire head. The three dural sinuses that we are going to learn by name are the superior sagittal sinus, the inferior sagittal sinus, and the transverse sinus. And while we're learning about dural folds, we'll locate these three sinuses. Dural folds are invaginations of the meningeal layer of the dura mater that serve to compartmentalize the brain into sections. And this prevents extraneous movement of the brain from side to side or from front to back. In this way, our dural folds are acting like packaging material inside of our cranium. So if you think about packaging up your kitchen, when you go to pack your glasses, you get a box that has those cardboard inserts. And those inserts then protect your glasses from moving side to side and bumping into each other where they would then break. Our dural folds are going to do the same thing for our brain. We have three different kinds of dural folds. We have a falx cerebri, a falx cerebelli, and a tentorium cerebelli. The two falx are going to separate right and left hemispheres. And their names tell you what they're separating. The falx cerebri 
separates the right and left cerebral hemispheres. Our falx cerebri is also going to house our superior sagittal sinus, which is this guy up here, and our inferior sagittal sinus. Next, we have the falx cerebelli. Remember, falx tells you it's separating the right and left hemispheres, and the cerebelli portion tells you that it's separating the hemispheres of the cerebellum. We can see that the falx cerebelli is much smaller than the falx cerebri because there's not as large an indentation in the cerebellum like we see in the cerebrum. Lastly, we have our tentorium cerebelli. Our tentorium cerebelli, our tentorium cerebelli is going to make a tent over the cerebellum and it separates the cerebellum from the cerebrum. Our tentorium cerebelli is going to house our transverse sinus right here. It's called our transverse sinus because it moves in a transverse plane through the head. So there are our three dural folds. Remember our falcs are going to separate hemispheres and our tentorium cerebelli makes a tent over the cerebellum. Now we get to move on and take a look at our arachnoid mater. The arachnoid mater in the brain is very similar to the arachnoid mater in our spinal cord. The arachna part means spider. So if you think about arachnophobia, that is a fear of spiders. And then the mother is mater. So our arachnoid mater is our spider mother. We can see it in this picture in green, and we can see that our arachnoid mater is going to run beneath our dura mater, so we're following our meningeal layer of our dura mater down into our longitudinal fissure here. And then our arachnoid mater sends out these spidery, cobweb-looking fibers through the subarachnoid space. Those fibers are called trabeculae because they are they look like little struts that go across that subarachnoid space. So what we see in light blue is this subarachnoid space and I'm cover, coloring over our trabeculae there. That subarachnoid space is filled with cerebrospinal fluid. We are going to talk about the subarachnoid space again when we talk about cerebrospinal fluid later on in this series. Our deepest layer of our meninges is called our pia mater, which means gentle mother. Our pia mater is a delicate, simple squamous layer that follows all of the convolutions and twists and turns of our cerebral cortex and our cerebellar cortex. So our pia mater is in direct contact with our neural tissue. It's very similar to the pia mater of our spinal cord in that it is a place for blood vessels to run along the surface of our neural tissue without coming in contact with our neural tissue. So here in our picture we can see some blood vessels. We've got some arteries and we have some veins. And so these blood vessels are allowed to run alongside our neural tissue without actually coming in contact with the neural tissue. And that sums up our dura, arachnoid, and pia maters, which make up our meninges. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact your instructor.